Hello everyone and welcome to Minecraft modding if you don't know Java. I am your boy Chips, I have made some more little Minecraft mods and I have worked on other bigger Minecraft mods and uh, uh, just been generally around in the Minecraft modding community. Uh, and I've noticed a lot of times that there's people who join asking how do I do this, how do I do that, and uh, all the tutorials that are given are always with the pre-notion that you know Java, you know some form of coding language. And not a lot of people do who want to make a simple Minecraft mod to see if they enjoy coding, that sort of things. So what my goal with this series is to kind of show you how to uh, Minecraft mod with no prior knowledge. Now, this isn't a tutorial on how to code Java, and I am not the greatest coder, but I will do my best to show you things that I've picked up along the way to make the experience easier and in order to help you along to further your interests so that you can go into more in-depth tutorials and learn the basis of the language. So we're just going to go ahead and start setting up your IDE with your development environment. Uh, I'm going to be using IntelliJ for this tutorial. I personally recommend IntelliJ. I find it it's quite robust. The GUI that it has makes things a lot easier. You don't have to type in a bunch of terminal commands. It has a bunch of pre stuff, and I like the dark theme. So uh, I have the ultimate edition, but I would assume you're not going to pay a lot of money. So I would download the community edition here. I'm sure most of you know how to install a program. Let that download, run the installer, install it to wherever you would like. All right, once that has been installed and you uh, find and run the program, uh, yours will look different than mine as I'm using Ultimate, but most of the things will translate over. First thing you're wanna, going to want to do is go into Plugins and Marketplace, and you're going to search Minecraft and download these three plugins. This one is not uh, as needed. I don't think we'll ever get into this, but I like to install all three every time just in case. The one that you will 100% need is Minecraft development. Minecraft NBT is just nice to, ha nice to have. All right, then also I have a program called Tab9. That's what you will see uses an AI to auto-generate recommendations for your code. Uh, it is not at all necessary, but that is why your thing will look different than mine. Install it if you want. So once you install those, it'll make you restart the program. And once the program is restarted, then we are ready. We'll go to projects. You're going to make a new project. It'll start you here, and we're going to go to Java. So you're going to make, uh, sorry, not to Java. You're going to go to Minecraft on the side here. Uh, this tutorial is specifically for 1.18.1, uh, but a lot of the stuff will translate over to other versions, at, like 1.16 especially. Uh, if you are doing 1.16, you are going to want to use Java 1.8, but if you're doing 1.18.1, we're going to be using Java 17. Now, you won't have these list of JDKs. How you get that is you'll click on Download JDK here, version 17, and I use the Amazon Coretto one, um, I'm pretty sure the Oracle OpenJDK will work, but for my purposes, I will be using this one. All right, so we'll select that, make sure it is the proper one, and we're gonna select Forge Mod as we are doing Forge. All right, next, your group ID, this is your name, your personal like username. I'm gonna put your boy Chips. And for the artifact ID, this is the name of the mod. I'm going to put uh, tutorial mod. Uh, make sure both of these are lowercase all the way as package. This will make packages and packages are always lowercase. Version 1.0, you can do that. All right, I'm going to change these to tutorial mod with a capital M as the, uh, these will be making classes. Every class uh, is, is the convention to have every word, no spaces, capital capitalize every word. All of these you can leave the same. I would recommend checking use mixins for future proofing if you ever decide to use mixins. I will eventually get into mixins on this tutorial, but it'll be a while. We're gonna go next, and then we're just gonna name the project tutorial. And we're gonna hit finish. Now this will generate the workspace here. 
as you see, it has nothing really here, but it'll set up the project automatically. You can see that it is downloading all of the stuff. You can click down there and it'll show your progress bar here. We're going to want to load Gradle project. And unpause that and just let this load. It'll take a minute, make sure if something is paused and it's not going through to unpause it. I'm just going to let this play out. All right, well, when it is done, sometimes it'll end up like this, and all you have to do is hit this Reload Gradle Projects, and then let it build through this thing again, and it should, once this is done, fix itself. All right, something I like to do real quick here is just type dot .var there, and replace all occurrences. Name it bus. Doesn't really matter what you name it. I just do that real quick off the bat so I don't forget. It's just a way to make it more efficient. All right, and we pretty well have everything just set up here. We're already done. Our build.gradle is properly set up. Our mods.tml is properly set up. Everything is set up for adding blocks and items which we will do in the next video. Oh, before I do that, let me just quickly make a public static final string. We're gonna call this mod underscore ID, and this is gonna equal your mod ID, which should automatically be put up there. This is just so that way we have a constant for our mod ID so we can never really mess it up whenever we need it. And then I like to call mod ID up there and import the static constant from our tutorial mod. And there you have it. That, that is our workspace here set up. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.